Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. You're feeling pretty good this morning, Mr. Norton. I'm feeling very good this morning, Mrs. Brown. Coming to the hospital to see your son agrees with you. And being a grandmama agrees with you, Grandma. You know, I think that's what I like best about you. What? I'm afraid to hear. You look just the way a grandmother should look. Your hair is white in the right places. You're plump in the right places. You've just the right wrinkles around your eyes. You're a very handsome woman and perfect for the part. I'm very flattered, David. Oh, I, I mean it. There should be more women like you. More grandmothers, I mean. David, you will swell this old head of mine. Uh, no fear of that. My hair's been white in streaks since I can't remember when. Perhaps it's been waiting for just this. All life waits for this. But some women are afraid to admit it. David, fatherhood has made you very wise. <laughs> I don't tell me, Mother, that... I'm just like every other newborn father. Oh, no, 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 not at all. Because I'm not. Much. Now, if Claudia's still asleep, we can always have a look at young Norton Jr. before you leave. You know, they, they seem awfully stingy about showing off babies in this hospital. After he was born last night, all I was allowed to see was a large package of flannel wraps being whisked down the hall. It's the modern method. I'll bet he's quite a little man. Room 802. Here's Claudia's room. Mm. Awfully quiet. She must be asleep. Maybe she just has nobody to talk to. Poor Claudia. How unhappy she must be. Do I uh, knock, Mother, or just walk in? This was your idea. You decide. Oh, I'm not very experienced in this. I don't remember ever calling on my wife the morning she's after she's had a baby. I'm not quite certain of the protocol. David, it's been a night. A great deal has happened, but you won't feel like strangers. You are a mind reader, Mrs. B. I'm an old lady, that's all. Never too old to be young, Grandma. I shall knock. No answer. She must be asleep. Nonsense. Claudia, asleep? She just didn't hear you. Knock again. Maybe she's not feeling well. Twice the reason. Knock again. Come in, come in, come in. You see, she hasn't changed at all. Immutable. Oh, my shoelace. David, go in while I tie my shoelace. Come in, come in, come in. What are you waiting for? Oh, David, I hoped it was you. What are you doing awake? You should be asleep. What on earth for? You're supposed to be resting. I've been awake missing you, darling, for hours. Good morning. Good morning, Mrs. Norton. Good morning, good morning. That's better. Oh, David, why can't you be in the hospital, too? I wish I... See, the way you look, I... I don't know what you're doing here. I don't either. I feel just wonderful this morning. Especially now. Did you... Did you sleep well? I slept perfectly. Although I was lonesome even while I was asleep. What about you? Mm, me too. You look tired. Well, I had a pretty tough time last night. You forgot. Oh, that's right. It was just last night. Mm. Congratulations, Mr. Norton. I understand you're the proud father of a proud son. Ah, uh, that I am. That I am. <laughs> Do you feel any different? No, not a bit. Do you? That's a funny thing. I don't feel a bit different. I thought I'd wake up this morning feeling like... like somebody else. Like who? Like uh, the old woman who lived in the shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. <laughs> we only have one. So far. But now that I've found out how simple it is, we're going to have dozens more. Hey, not so fast. Give me time to recuperate. <laughs> oh, darling, it is good to see you. Where's Mom at home? Mama's being tactful. Oh, She's tying you... shoelaces outside the door. I brought her up fine, didn't I? <laughs> Just do as well by your own son. I won't have to. I'll never have to tell him anything. Little dreamer. Hey, Mother, the big moment is over. You can come in now. We don't mind your intruding, really. We, we don't. You two children, you're not alone in this hospital. Shh, there are sick people here. Not on this floor. Everybody's had babies. Good morning, Grandma. Good morning, Mother. You're looking very chipper. 
Why shouldn't I? No reason I can think of. I even had breakfast in bed. <sighs> Shame on you. Oh, they insisted. You just simply can't argue with a nurse, David. They go about their business as if the patient didn't exist. That is not going to be as easy for your nurse as she thinks. And I simply can't understand why they keep treating me like a patient. David, when are you going to get me out of here? No sooner than you're supposed to. But I feel fine. Mm, don't you consider that Mama and I need a rest? Mm. Oh, that's right. You're not as young as I am. I always keep forgetting. Just keep forgetting. <clears throat> well, just see that you don't. I'm years and years older than I really am this morning. Listen to him. When all said and done, even David is only a man. And I never realized the limitations more clearly than last night. Poor David. It's not your fault. That makes me feel a lot better. Darling. Yes, what? Nothing, only have you seen your mother's grandson this morning? Face it, David. He's yours. Yes, I saw him. They brought him in for me to hold his bottle. Very modern, this hospital. Oh, yes, it's the latest method. We're supposed to get acquainted. David, at the risk of sounding silly, he's so beautiful. Of course he is. You weren't so bad yourself, Claudia. Why, Mama, all these compliments. I should have a baby more often. Uh, you were telling me what he looked like. Haven't you seen him? Just fleetingly last night. This morning, you were my first call. I've known you long. Don't ever forget <laughs> Well, he has hair, David. Funny little hair. I think it's sort of the color of yours. Mm. And when he opens his eyes, they're blue. Sort of the color of yours. Well, mine are only sort of, but his are really blue. All babies have blue eyes. Mother, you sound jaded. It's true, David. Ask any authority you like. I don't have to. Our son's eyes are the best authority. Listen to her bursting with motherly pride already. <laughs> You two are going to be impossible. Your mother, Claudia, takes great glee in pretending to be crusty. It's better than syrup. Just ignore her, and, and you can go on telling me about uh, young Mr. Norton. Well, there's really nothing to tell except he's so sweet. And I like him much better than I expected to. Well? He holds his hands in little fists. Yeah, that's good and manly. I mean, mm. he, he'll probably be a fighter. Oh, stop. He has stop. perfect little fingernails. So soon? They're born with them. Every child? Every single solitary child. I'm sure there's nothing exceptional about yours. Oh. Mama's right. There's no one thing exceptional except that he's completely exceptional. And to prove that, I, I think the thing for you and me to do, Mother, is to walk down the hall and, and have a look at him. Hmm? Oh, I wish I could come, too. Now you just stay right where you are. Don't you go jumping out of bed until the doctor says you can. Dr. Rowland's going to be here this afternoon, and I intend to have a good talk with him. None of this pampering for me. I'm going to come home just as soon as I can... What's the matter? Don't you think we can get along without you? We're doing just fine, thank you. Mm -hmm. I know, but it's me. I can't get along without you. Oh. And then every time I'm just getting acquainted with our son, the nurse whisks him in and carries him off. I wish I were in China. Well, that's a new thought. Uh, why China? In China, in case you didn't know it. Women hoe fields the day after their children are born. You don't say. Even the hour after the children are born. I saw it in a movie once. Oh. You were there. Oh. I don't know why. Just because I happen to have a baby in New York, I have to stay in bed spending all this money as if I'm sick or something. Now, shut up and stop worrying about money. Come along, Mother. We'll go pay our respects to the heir of the Norton fortune. <laughs> there won't be any fortunes at this hospital's rate. That is my <laughs> business. Oh, David, be sure you come back before you go away. I'll be back, darling. You just sit back and rest. I'll be back. I'll miss you. Well, she's the same Claudia. Motherhood hasn't made a particle of difference. She's still it? young. She'll be up and around before you know it. Yeah, I thought it'd be a lot worse than it is. Thank goodness it's over. And over so well. Now, we'd better call the nurse. What on earth for? Well, to point out your son for us through the glass window of the nursery. Well, I don't need anybody to point him out. You you forgot I, I'm the boy's father. I don't forget, but babies have a way of all looking very much alike. Honestly, you you women. Well, I'd, I'd know my boy out of a hundred children. You would, eh? Yeah, besides which, Claudia described him to us. Very accurately. Now, you'll see. Every father knows his son. Ah, here's the nursery. Goodness, what a lot of babies. Yeah, I wish I could catch their eye, then I'd know for sure. Now, let me see. The blue ribbons are the boys, David. Mm -hmm. And my son is one of six boys. Oh, look at that one, with his hands curled up close no, to his no, face. No, 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 no. He's, he's too small. They certainly look angry when they're asleep. Oh, 
There he is, Mother. Where? There he is, second from the left in the last row. That one? I know that's he. But, Davy, that, that baby is... That baby is ours. You're sure? I'm no. positive. He, he's got Claudia's nose. Go on. And look at that complexion. Perfect. He looks fine, big. You can tell he's a country boy just by looking at him. Oh, he's going to make one sock dollager of a swell fisherman. Give him a few years. Quick, Mother. Mother, does he look as if he's smiling? It's gas. Oh, all right, so it's gas. He still looks as if he's smiling. He's a good big baby, isn't he? Enormous for eight hours. I wish he'd open up his eyes so if I could see whether they were blue or not. I repeat, all babies have blue eyes. Yeah, just the way I expected him to look. I don't mind saying I, I, I'm proud to be that baby's father. Your wife told me you came down the hall to have a look at your son, Mr. Norton. Oh, oh yes, nurse. We, we're just getting acquainted. It's... All right, isn't it? Well, if you like, I can bring him right up to the window so you can see him better. Uh, you could? Uh, well, I, I wouldn't want you to wake him oh, up. He but... won't wake up. At his age, babies don't wake up very easily. I'm sorry we can't bring him out to you, but you can mentally shake his hand. David, you're leaving a nose print on the window. Oh, so I am. See, the nurse is, is going right to that crib. I knew that's my son. <laughs> you women, you, you think a man has absolutely no instinct for this. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. She's going to the wrong crib. Hey, nurse. She can't hey, hear nurse. you, David. You better not make such a commotion. Mother, she's gone right by him. You'd think she'd look at the cards at the bottom of the bed or something. She's picking up a bed, Hey, nurse. David. Look at that tiny little one. Hey, nurse, not, not that one. Now she's coming up to the window with your son. He's a darling. Is that my son? That, that puny little red thing? He's only eight hours old, David. That's the best he can do for you. Are you sure that's it, though? That's it, I'm sure. Oh. Isn't he sweet, all oiled up? Grandma, we have been robbed. <laughs> oh, I imagine we'll be able to put up with him, David. In summertime, hospitality moves out of doors. Mom sets a luncheon table for her guest on the porch or in the garden. The young people have gala parties, as easy as you please, out under the trees. And always, Coke provides delicious ice-cold refreshment at these gatherings, whether they're planned or impromptu. You couldn't ask a simpler formula for pleasant hospitality than a case of Coca-Cola. Your grocer or service station attendant will be glad to put a case in your car today. Say, Joe, why didn't you tell me what to expect? Oh, I figured you'd find out soon enough. Well, he's, he's so small. Well, he'll grow. He'd better. I'll be scared to have anything to do with him. You'll get used to that, too, David. Speaks the veteran. Well, tell me, veteran, did your wife perk up as quickly as Claudia? And that's something else you'll find out about. What do you mean? Well, they feel fine the next day, but uh, tomorrow... Uh, not so good, huh? Well, you'll be seeing Claudia tomorrow, so you can get your information firsthand. But don't worry, David... A little loot will put the light back in Claudia's eyes. I'll figure that one out tomorrow. So long, Joe. And congratulations, David. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs>